Well, hey friend, normally we'd have a live online Bible study on a Thursday evening, but tomorrow I'm about to travel for a speaking engagement and I have to wake at like three in the morning. So I opted to share a short devotional with you instead. This month, we've been exploring the topic of spiritual warfare. And if you've been with me, you know I have a little bit of a different take on spiritual warfare than other people. We discussed that in last week's Bible study called Simple Warfare. In that message, we touched upon maybe the most known spiritual warfare passage in scriptures. It's Ephesians 6, 10 through 17, what's known as the armor of God. Now, I know there's been plenty taught about the armor of God. Most teach how to take each of its six pieces to engage in battle with the enemy, kind of hoping for victory. But some years ago, the Lord clued me into three particular words throughout the passage that changed everything that I thought and now teach about spiritual warfare, which ensures victory. So let's start with Ephesians 6.10. The Apostle Paul says, be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Now, that's a good introduction to the entire passage because here Paul emphasizes that the armor of God really has nothing to do with your own power or performance. Keep that in mind as we read. Verse 11 then says, put on all of God's armor so that you will be able to stand firm against all the strategies of the enemy. That verse right there contains the first two words that change everything, and we're going to work backward here. The first word is stand. I talk about this one a lot. You've probably heard me say it, especially if you've read any of my books. Paul says, stand firm against all the strategies of the enemy. A lot of times when we think of engaging in spiritual warfare, we think of a fight or a battle, as I said earlier. Whether it's in our personal lives or in the culture, we talk about fighting the enemy's strategies. We're up against it. But I remind you, as Paul said in the introduction verse, victory against the enemy isn't about our efforts. It's about God's. It's His power. That's why then in this passage, he doesn't use the word fight. He uses stand. And you're going to see it a couple more times in the next couple of verses. Verses 12 through 13, For we are not fighting against flesh and blood enemies, but against evil rulers and authorities of the unseen world, against mighty powers in this dark world, against evil spirits in the heavenly places. Therefore, put on every piece of God's armor so that you will be able to resist the enemy in the time of evil. Then after battle, you will be standing firm. Verse 14, stand your ground. So stand, stand, stand. Now here comes the second big word. Putting on the belt of truth, and the body armor of righteousness. The phrase putting on, that's the Greek word enduo. And it doesn't mean suit up in your boxing gloves to prepare for a fight. Enduo means to take on the character of something. It's like an actor who gets into character. They actually assume the character's qualities to become the character. They think like and speak like the character, and then they act like the character. So this verse is telling us that we win by assuming the character of Christ, particularly six qualities of his character, which Paul then lists out throughout the next couple of verses. The belt of truth, the body armor of righteousness, the shoes of peace, the shield of faith, the helmet of salvation, and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. So as I said, notice that each one of those pieces of the armor represent an aspect of Christ. Jesus is truth. He is our righteousness, our peace, our faith, our salvation. So all of those, truth, righteousness, peace, faith, salvation, none of those are qualities that we fight for, beg for, or perform in some way that might convince God that we're good enough to get. We don't do righteousness. We don't do peace or salvation or faith. No. Basically, Paul says, see yourself in Christ. Those are qualities we already have in him. So stand confident that his qualities are your qualities. And it's that assurance of who you are and what you have in Christ that then neutralizes whatever attack, threat, lie, or accusation the enemy forms against you. His works are powerless against somebody who knows who they are. I could talk so much more about the individual pieces and how they each represent Jesus and what they each mean about us, especially in terms of spiritual warfare. That's all in my Armor of God e-course if you're interested. 
But finally, the last verse, which is Paul's conclusion to the armor and really spiritual warfare, it contains the third word that changes everything. In verse 17, he says, Take the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. So the key word there is word. In Greek, it's rhema, which is a spoken statement. So you see, it's the word of God. When spoken from our mouths, that acts like a sword. Speaking God's word defends us from the enemy's attacks and prevents future attacks because it renews our mind to who we are in Christ. When the enemy tries to attack us, we know who we are and the attacks can't take root. So that's a big part of the putting on process. Speaking God's word is a primary way that helps you step into character and stand in victory. So again, more on all that in my Armor of God e-course. You can check that out at kylewinkler.org armor. But the point of all of this is simple. It really is simple. I say it all the time. Spiritual warfare is not done by fighting a defeated devil. It's done simply by standing in the victory, in the identity of Jesus, the one who defeated the devil. Remember, it's God's work, not yours, that did the work. Victory is already yours in Christ. So just accept it, see yourself in it, and stand in it. Be blessed this week, friends, and I'll see you next week for a live Bible study. Are you in the middle of a mental, emotional, or spiritual struggle? Here's some good news. God has provided a way to beat that battle today. Yes, you have access right now to spiritual armor, complete with six supernatural weapons that ensure victory in any circumstance. Ready to powerfully access and activate this armor? I've created an in-depth interactive e-course to show you how. The Armor of God e-course includes six dynamic video lessons in which I reveal how to effectively use the weapons outlined in Ephesians 6 to radically shift from chaos to calm, fear to faith, sorrow to joy, and battle to triumph. It's an eye-opening, illustrated exploration of the armor of God that unlocks all the victory Jesus died to give you. This e-course isn't just something you watch, but it's an immersive experience with which you interact. Each lesson includes a 16-minute video teaching, a lesson guide with reflection questions and application tips, and a discussion forum where I interact with you. The Armor of God eCourse is available for you to join in on today. Simply visit kylewinkler.org armor to get started. And because the six lesson eCourse streams entirely online, there's nothing you have to wait for to arrive. Begin instantly from any internet connected computer, tablet, or smartphone, and continue at your own pace from wherever you are. You no longer have to be under attack, but you can live on the attack and I want to show you the way. Join me now to discover how to access and activate the armor of God to beat your battles today. Visit kylewinkler.org armor to get started, and I'll see you there.